2000 to water wrap 4, remove the throttle body, the idle air control valve, EGR valve and the EGR pipe. Check the pin comment or the description for some timestamps. It's going to be a long video because we're going to have a lot of different components coming out. Because I'm taking off the throttle body, it's the throttle body here to clean it and uh, check out my idle air control valve which is on the bottom of the throttle body. I'm also just going to clean the EGR valve while I'm back there and take that pipe out. But you don't actually have to do the front part of this video. You don't have to take out the throttle body or anything to take out the EGR valve. I'll show you how to do that real quick. Here's what I need for the EGR valve. This is the EGR valve here and this is the pipe I'm talking about. To get the EGR valve off, you're just going to remove this 12 millimeter nut, one on the other side, and then two uh, 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom. I'll show a timestamp for that part in the video. You can skip ahead if that's all you want to do is pull the EGR valve off and test it. But as you can see, getting that pipe out is going to be another story because the pipe goes into a connection over here. Um, well, you can see it there. That's it there. It threads into a hole in the head. And so if you do determine that you need to remove that pipe because it's real clogged up and congested, then you will have to take some other parts out. So we'll start next with pulling everything out of the way to get that throttle body out and all of the other stuff. First up, I'm gonna remove this air box. There are four clips just like this, two here, and then two back on the back side, back here, here, and there. Then if you have ABS, you'll have this little ABS relay here, this just slides off and just kind of put this to the side. And up here, this is an air temperature sensor. So you just pull this out, just pull the electrical out just like that. Right down here, this is just a little clamp for the accelerator link. You can just unclip that just like that. I just move the camera over to this side of the air box. Back here is a little hose. So I like to put a little piece of tape on it. It's just this little hose that goes onto the back of the air box there. Disconnect this here. This uh, hose that goes into the valve cover, you just pull this out just like that. All right, now right here, this, this fastener here for the hose, that's a 10 millimeter. This hose right here, you can just close this with your fingers, pull it back and then pull this hose back and then follow this hose down and you'll see it's in a little spot right here on the air hose it just fits in that little groove just pull that out so it can remain in the vehicle then with this loose here you just pry this off this hose I have to kind of get behind it a little bit and pull it off there it is now you can grab this whole thing and just pull it right out of the way now what you see here, this is the this is the throttle body here. So the butterfly is right in there. When you're pressing on the accelerator, you're turning this, which is moving that valve in there. This is the throttle position sensor, which just tells the ECM what position the butterfly is in. This part from here to here is the throttle body. There's a gasket between here and the and the uh, air intake plenum. Down here on the bottom is where the IAC, the idle air control valve is. And then up here, this is the EGR valve. That's the vacuum modulator. VSV vacuum switching valve is down on the bottom. It's actually way down there, way down there. Now we can disconnect this with electrical. I'll disconnect the electrical for the, uh, for the throttle position sensor first. There's a little clip on the back that you press in and pull it out very carefully like that. This is the part on the back that you're pressing down right there. Then same deal, it's a similar sort of a, a press in one down here for the IAC. Okay, there's, there's that. We're gonna remove these two little vacuum hoses so I'm going to label, label them. I'm just gonna label this one rear. And I'll label the other one front. Let's try this. Just to at least sort of break it free. There you go. Okay, so if you get a twist on it, if you get it, get it to twist and kind of break free, then it'll come off some. So those are the ones we just took off. We can leave this on because this is going to come off with the throttle body. All this will come off with the throttle body. Move the camera a little bit. Now we'll just disconnect this on the throttle body. This is the accelerator link. You'll only have this top one if you have a automatic. This is the kick down cable. Just pull it out just like that. 
And for the bottom one, you can just turn the butterfly valve till you get it, so you can pull that out. Sometimes they stick a little bit. And you can label these if you'd like, but as you can see, one is such, one is larger diameter and much longer. To pull the throttle body back, so we can get to those coolant lines, we'll break free these three fasteners first. There's one here, one right here, and one right there. And those are all 12 millimeter. Just break each one of them free first before you remove any one of them. Okay, last one. And with those three fasteners out, they're all the same. The startle body will move forward just like that. And now we can reach those coolant lines. Come back over from this way and you can see now we can reach these coolant lines. And this is a coolant line, that is a coolant line, and this one here is a, a vacuum line. I'm gonna pinch these off with some hose clamps because I don't want coolant going everywhere. But if you don't have hose clamps, you can take them off and just quickly jam something in there to keep these from leaking. But you will get, you, this, these will leak. There's gonna be coolant in there. So I have a large one here and a smaller one here. And so to make sure I order these back in, I'm just gonna make a little mark right here. Still gonna be a little coolant that will come out. So I'll try to do my best to catch it with a little bit of napkins. Okay, now I can get in here and grab that hose clamp. Mm, a little tricky to reach that flat one there. Let's see if I can get it like this. And now I think I can. Now that's good. Now I think I can get this coolant hose off. Turn this. Bring it down. These are old hoses, so I don't want to damage the hose any. Here it goes. Almost got most of that coolant. There it goes. I'm gonna be careful with these coolant hoses because they're pretty old. Try to catch it with the paper towel. There we go. Okay, now there's this this air hose. I'm gonna drain this coolant in the paper towel. A little less of a mess. Alright, and then this air hose is just pulled off as well. There it goes, okay. Okay, so here's the throttle body, and it comes off with this uh, this uh, throttle modulator. This is where you adjust that down there, uh, and then the IAC and the butterfly. We can see, and there's a throttle position sensor. Well, it's it's clean on one side because I cleaned it, you know, maybe last year or the year before, not too long ago, but I didn't take it off to clean it. This here's a gasket. I'm going to be replacing this gasket, so let's look inside. So let's take this to the bench and see what's going on here. All right, what we have here, this is the this is the plenum side, and this is the air hose side. And so when you're pressing on the throttle, you're pulling that cable, which is turning that butterfly valve. So this butterfly valve is on a pivot which is connected to a little rheostat inside here. This is the throttle position sensor, TPS. So this is giving the position of that throttle. That you're, when you're stepping on the, on the accelerator and this is moving back and forth, the position is given back to the ECU through this little sensor. So then down here, we have the IAC, idle air control valve. Here's the electrical side of it. And these four screws, one, two, three, and four. Those four screws come out. There's a little gasket behind there. And that's what we'll do in a second to get the IAC off. This over here is called the throttle valve. And you can notice when this little set screw. And when you make an adjustment here, you can push this back so you'll have a slightly different adjustment on your butterfly valve. It's not typically an adjustment that you need to 
do, uh, but it is something you can look online for a little bit more information about that or if you have an FSM, there's some info in the FSM about that. Now, this is an important note. If you're taking off any of these fasteners, these might look like Phillips, but these aren't Phillips. Here's what I mean. This here is a Phillips, and this here looks like a Phillips, but it's not. This here, this one here, is a JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard, and you can see the shape of the tip is quite different. And what that, what that means and use is when you put a Phillips in here, look how it sits. This is ready to cam out just while I'm just turning it by hand. It's ready to slip out. Watch what happens when I put the JIS in. It goes all the way in. So that's why sometimes you'll see these screws will get cammed out because uh, people try to remove them with a regular Phillips and this is not a regular Phillips. Now the JIS, uh, JISs, they're great because they will work in Phillips and then they'll work in these too. See how well it fits? Look how well this bit fits in there just like that and you can really dig into that I have a variety of different Phillips bits here if I use it no matter which one I use it's because the angle is different you want to use this JIC I'm going to go ahead and uh, crack open these screws yeah there it goes see that now if I was to try to do that with uh, Phillips it would probably just cam right out and ruin the fastener so they're a little bit hard to find, like you have to, you know, maybe order them online or, boy, these are tight. You have to maybe order them online or they might have them at Lowe's. I haven't checked. That one's real tight. I might have to get my ratchet for that. There it goes. Okay. And yeah, let's get this one. Oh, that one I'm going to need my ratchet for. If you don't have a JIS and you're going to go ahead and try to do that with the regular Phillips, then what I would suggest is that you use a an impact screwdriver, or in the very least that you really, really, really press down and turn this. But if you save yourself the trouble and you just go ahead and get your JIS bits, you'll find yourself using them all the time on Toyotas and in other Japanese uh, and Asian vehicles. Now, I've got one. I need a little bit more leverage, so this is another great little tool you can get where you can put your bit in, so you can use your use your ratchet, give a give a lot more leverage. On these tight, tight guys. Holy smokes! I just broke that right off. All right, so this was a huge delay. One of these screws cammed out and uh, I had to cut it out. So if this happens to you, what I suggest is to just go straight to some type of rotary tool. My Dremel was too big, so I just used my super cheapo from Harbor Freight. You can get these for like six bucks. They come with all these little, these little discs. And I went through about three of these discs, but um, I cut off the washer and the whole head uh, you can see on this one here that there's that locking washer underneath there. You can see this just spins right out. There's nothing holding it in after you get that washer off. So all of that clamping is done by that washer, that locking washer. So that's what I suggest, just take out the, the locking washer. I tried cutting in um, a slot to use a, a flathead screwdriver that didn't work. The screw material is just too soft. So what you want to do is just cut the whole head off, go right in at the washer, take the whole thing off, get that washer out, and then you'll be able to, to remove that fastener. So now I'm going to have to get another one of these fasteners, and I'm going to have to get another set of JISs because those were my only two JIS bits. All right, you may remember that this was on here like that. 
I took that off. It's just a 10 millimeter bolt. I took that off to be able to get into get in here with my little uh, rotor tool to cut that screw. So something you can do if this happens to you. Hopefully it doesn't happen to you, but I don't know, man. Those were very tight. Maybe an impact uh, an impact screwdriver with that with that proper bit might have been a better solution. We can now remove those four screws and take this off. That one, the st stud one is just in there. And we're supposed to be having coolant up there because remember, these are the two coolant lines. So the, that gasket is to keep coolant there. And you can see I got a little carbon in there. It doesn't look too, too bad though. This is the original gasket and uh, it's actually in pretty good shape. Kind of remarkable. Now you can see in here, got a little bit of carbon on there. I'm going to have to wait until my uh, new GIS, GIS bits come in because uh, these are GIS and I don't want to cam out more screws. If you look real carefully on these fasteners, you'll see this little dot. And that means that they're GIS fasteners. So if you try to remove those with the Phillips, pretty good chance you're gonna strip them. For now, I'll get a little carb cleaner in there and see how thick this is. It's pretty thin. Oh yeah, it's cleaning very easily. I'm gonna open up the other side of this here. Cause that's where it's gonna drain through. And get in here. Just one little spray on that side, clean that up real well. You can see the side's already starting to clean up quite a bit. So I'm going to pull this IAC apart a little bit more, but I want to mention I'm going to remove these two screws here. Those are the screws that have the little dot on them that I showed earlier. And typically you don't have to remove these. I'm going to show you how to do it to expose that pencil in there so that you can turn that pencil on really clean and really clean the valve if you have a, a lot of stuff going on in your valve and you're just trying to kind of salvage it. But under normal circumstances, if your IAC valve isn't that dirty, you can just clean it up here. You just clean it up here, get it clean, and then you'll be able to see soon when, you, when we test it with some power how it's functioning. But if it's real dirty in there and you need to get in and manually turn this um, pin tool to open and close that, that's when you would remove these two screws, which you're about to see. So, In other words, probably most people don't need to remove these two screws that you're about to see me remove. My new vessel, JIS, Japanese Industrial Standard kit, came in the mail. You can see made in Japan. Really nice. I really am surprised at how nice this is. Okay, so it says I have a JIS 2, 3, and 1. There are th three of the ends there. Really looks pretty nice. I believe this might be the one that I need. And here's the other. It feels like that's it. So let's give it a shot. This is nice, really nice feel on this. It's a, and it's nice and it's got this ball on the end, so that's nice. It gives you more to grip on. Hopefully this doesn't break. Oh yeah. Nice. You do want to bear down on it when you're turning it. Oh sweet. Oh yeah, this is nice. Okay. This is a problem solver here. So I'm going to take these screws out. There are the screws for that electrical and the IAC. You see, they have a locking washer and a regular washer underneath. So boy, I don't know what you would do if you were, if you strip those out. You probably try to, try to drill them out, I guess. There it goes. Let's see. Look at that. It's got a little gooey. A little bit of gooiness on there and there we are so there is there is the little pintle for the IAC now if we turn this you want to turn this very gently and on some IACs you don't want to turn this like uh, on the ones that are in dodges you don't want to turn this at all because you can break the mechanism but this one is like it's got a spring you can feel the spring 
The spring is calibrated back here. That's what these things are all about. How this plate is turned. So don't fiddle around with these. Don't mess with these. I clean this up a bit with some carb cleaner and I think I'll get in there a little bit more, but it feels, feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. Now I don't know this for a fact, but I think this is where the travel is supposed to end. You can see the valve is not all the way closed right there. It would be all the way closed, but I'm actually having to exert extra force here on the end. It's natural path. It, easily opens all the way up here and that's a stop and then that right there is about where the stop is right there you have to add a little bit extra turn to get it to get it there so I, I've got it pretty I've got it pretty clean but I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more and then I will throw power on it and see how it switches it moves really easily from stop to stop in order to get it past this stop you have to add some so I think its stop position is there. This still has some of this sticky on it, so I'm just gonna reuse this sticky and put this back on. And when you put it on, you'll feel the magnet kind of grab. You might've just heard that there. And then get this lined up and drop those screws back in. And remember it's the ones with the two washers. Get both those screws in and a little bit tight before you tighten them both. And I'm not going to get too crazy with these. I think that's fine. Now we'll test the IAC. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, B plus and RSC or RSO. We'll just call this one, two, three with that on the left side as our reference. We'll go positive to B and then just cycle between RSC and RSO. So positive to second slot and cycle ground from one to three. Here's our left side marker. So that middle one is gonna be our positive. And we'll start with this number one slot, which is the negative. And when we throw a positive to here and ground to here, we should see the valve close. Just gonna use 12 volts. All right, so there's my setup. I just got red positive over here and that's to this metal one and then negative is this black one and I'm just going to go ahead and close this and let's see if I can get it to focus okay you can see it moving it doesn't move much see it doesn't move much now we'll flip this just take black and go over to three spot and that should open it when we close this. Now I'll close this. And you see it moves. It opens up all the way. But it still only moves to that stop. So I'm going to put this back up here to one. And you can see it doesn't move much, but it does move. Another test you can do on the IEC according to the FSM is you can check resistance between 2 and 1 and 2 and 3 at hot or cold. This is obviously cold and so at cold you're going to be looking for 17 to 24 and a half ohms. So there we go, 20, 21 and a half. So that's good and then we'll move to this one here. And see what we get here, 21.3. So these are good. If you got uh, wild values besides that range, uh, what did I say? 17 to 24 and a half cold and 21 and a half to 28 and a half ohms if it's hot. I'll get this cleaned up. I'm just gonna take a little carb cleaner. Not very thick at all. Turn this and get in there, clean all that out. I'm going to spray in here. So 
I got the throttle body cleaned up pretty well. Just went in and sprayed and used a old toothbrush. I cleaned out this passage here and I also took some carb cleaner and just shot it through each of these and you can you can follow these to see where each one goes. So this one here is that there, that one there is here. Some of them are very very small like that little tiny hole right there. That's an air passage. So just get the, all that cleaned up. I did slip off the one vacuum hose, the vacuum hose that goes right here. I just slipped that off so I could spray through with the uh, carb cleaner. Now we can put this IAC back on. Here's the new gasket. Uh, kind of got a little bit of carb cleaner on here, but there's the part number. Fell Pro 61085. And this is only going to fit one way, and it's not that way. It's that way. So I'll get that on there, get it into the little groove. Push it in. Looks like that corner wants to come out a little bit. Okay. And then we'll grab this. And this also only goes on one way, which is this way. You can see how the larger side will align with the larger side. I guess I should show it this way. It goes like this. And we'll get that on there. And then get those fasteners in. That's these fasteners with the locking washers. And of course I had to buy a new screw uh, from Toyota and that is the part number. I bought two because I have a feeling I'm going to break more in the future. I'm going to put my new one in the same spot as the one that I broke because that's the only one that you can't get to the back of. The other three you can get to the back of. So just get these in and tighten them about the same each and you don't want to go crazy. Kind of go back and forth. And I'm only going to do about that. About like that. Okay. My AC is back on. Now we'll get this EGR valve off. The EGR valve has two fasteners. This is a nut here and then one on the other side. Those are 12 millimeter that hold it to the intake and then there are two more fasteners, a 10 and another 10 right on the other side that hold it to this pipe. This is the pipe for the EGR. EGR is exhaust gas recirculation so this pipe goes all the way back around to the front because that's where the exhaust is on the RAV4. To get those, I'm going to use this obstruction wrench. You can get these at Harbor Freight. I think I might be able to just sneak on there. And I might have just enough room to crack it free. Let's see. So I'm going to turn it this way. There it is. Okay. And I'll get this one. Okay. So that'll get you in there. You can get a kit that, of these obstruction wrenches. These are great. You're going to want to make sure you don't drop these because these will be very hard to find. And there they are. They're both the same. Now for these two 12 millimeter, I can get on both of these with a six point deep socket. Just like that. That will give me some leverage. Okay, not too tight. Just break it free and then move to the other one. Uh, just as a heads up, there's going to be a gasket right here, and there's also going to be a gasket here. If you don't have, you can see it right there. If you don't have replacements, you'll have to reuse yours. Um, I'll show you the part numbers for the replacements, though. So don't lose these nuts, because these are really even harder to find than those little bolts. Here's the two nuts, and now. I'll pull this back and just I'll loop this off here and you see that gasket there on the bottom and we'll disconnect let's grab that real quick right now and I'll grab this, this other gasket as well 
Now we'll get, get, get back here and remove these uh, vacuum hoses. I think I'll be having a little bit more room if I pull this one off first. So that's that top one there, and that might be a good idea to label that. And now I can pull this one off. That's <laughs> on there. Okay, have a look at that EGR valve, and it's really, it's not too bad. A little bit dirty inside, but we'll see if it's closing all the way. So I'll bring this over to the bench. We'll clean this up with a little bit of carb cleaner. Let's see how much that does. And it uh, might have to go in with a little brush or a pipe cleaner. All right, to check this EGR valve and make sure it's closing all the way, you want to put your thumb over this here and then fill that up. Fill it up all the way to the brim here with carb cleaner and it should stay. It shouldn't leak. You know, over on this side, that's where, I don't know if I can turn it without spilling it, that's where it would be leaking. It would be leaking in there if the valve was sticking open. So you can see that's not the case. This is good. The valve is not sticking. And when I release my thumb, the fluid, the carb cleaner will come out this way. I'll just clean this up and get that carbon off there. Here is the EGR valve that I took off the RAV and you can see it's cleaned up. It's holding well, it doesn't leak, it's closing just fine. But I happen to have another EGR valve that I picked up a few years ago at the junkyard because it just looked really new. And the spring on this one feels a little better. So I'm gonna swap this in instead and the gaskets that's the gasket and the other gasket that was pulled off let's take a closer look at this EGR valve you can see I've got it cleaned up but I'll show you here how you can troubleshoot this and test it on the bench so you don't put back in an EGR valve that's actually malfunctioning after you get it all cleaned up what you want to do is you want to apply vacuum up here at this port because the way the CGR valve works is this is where the exhaust is coming in it's coming in through that pipe remember where we have those two bolts then the exhaust is supposed to go up to the bottom of this pintle and when the pintle is down and seated no exhaust is supposed to make it in here because this is the air intake no exhaust is supposed to make it through the air intake instead the exhaust is supposed to go this way over to the bottom of the vacuum modulator to play as um, back pressure on the vacuum modulator the way the, the pintle lifts up is it lifts up with vacuum. So applying vacuum here should cause the, the pintle to lift up. And we should also be able to hold vacuum up here because the whole reason that pintle is lifting up is that this diaphragm here, there's a spring in it. And the vacuum is pushing up against the spring, but it has to be airtight all the way around the perimeter. And then when we release vacuum, that's how that pintle will fall. So if you look in there, you can see that it's open now and I close it and it's ball. So the things we need to check are whether it's airtight on the bottom here, whether we're holding vacuum up here, and how the pintle travels. So you saw a version of this test a second ago when we just put the carb cleaner in there, and that's one way to do it. You can also put a clean hose in the bottom here, and then cover up this port, and blow into the other side of the clean hose, and you're not going to want to have any air leaking out here. Okay, so you're going to pretend to be exhaust back pressure. You just blow into the other side of the hose like this. And you can see that's airtight. I'm not able to blow the air through. And I'll do it again, and I'll just move my finger. And that way we'll be checking to make sure that we can get exhaust down this port. Because we do want exhaust to be able to make it down this port. So here we go. So that's a good test result. For the passages on the bottom here, that tells us that we can get flow from here down here, and it also tells us that this is seating well. That's seating well, so the pintle's pushing all the way down. Sometimes what happens is they'll get all kinds of carbon and stuff in there, and the pintle won't be able to push all the way down. And sometimes you can clean it up, and that'll solve the problem, but other times you can't clean it up. Um, things go wrong, and then the pintle won't seal all the way. So if your pintle is not sealing all the way, 
and you cleaned it up and it's still not sealing all the way, you'll need to get a new EGR valve. Now moving up to the top, this top part is diaphragm and inside there is a spring. Can't take that apart without ruining it because it needs to be airtight. But when I push up on that spring, that's how that pencil is moving up, you see, like that. And you might even hear a little air coming out here. That's because it's pushing the air out because I'm pushing up on the spring. The way this works when it's actually in the vehicle is it's vacuum here. So when we apply vacuum here, we should see that pencil lift up. So you can either do that with a clean hose and just take a sip off the other end and watch it come up. Or um, I'll hook up a vacuum gauge. Vacuum gauge is nice because you can look at the values on the gauge and see if it's leaking. So you can see I just have the vacuum gauge hooked up to this hose. And I'm just going to throw a vacuum on there and watch that pencil inside. And you'll see with very little vacuum that will open up. So here we go. Just see how it's already moving? Just a little bit of vacuum. And then it max out. I'm adding vacuum, but I'm not getting any more travel on the pencil. So that's the maximum position there for that. If we look inside, you can see that the bottom of that valve is kind of cone-shaped. And it's supposed to sit real nice into that opening. And that's where you can get the problems if it gets clogged up. Two things can happen. Either it won't seat, so you'll see I'll release the vacuum. Release the vacuum. Either it won't seat all the way down, and it'll still be leaking. So you might get a code because you have exhaust gas getting into the intake when you shouldn't have it. Or it might get so clogged up with stuff in there that it can't move up. So that would be, you know, even if you're getting vacuum here across the VSV, it's working function, it's uh, working properly. It might not be, the vacuum alone might not be enough to pull it up if it's real, real clogged in there. Another reason that might happen though is if, um, if you are getting vacuum, at this line to the EGR valve, but the EGR valve is not opening. It could be because you have a big vacuum leak in here. And those are two cases where you would have to replace it. If you, if you have a vacuum leak up here, you're not going to be able to fix it. And if it's not sealing down here or not lifting, even when it's all cleaned up, then you will also have to replace it. Now when you do this test with vacuum on this port on the EGR valve, whether you have a hand pump or not, you want to make sure that it is also holding vacuum. So you see it's all, it's moving, it's moved up all the way, it's maxed out. And then if you have a hand pump, make sure that it's holding vacuum because you don't want to have a vacuum leak up there on the seal. If you don't have a hand pump, what you can do is just apply suction on it and then just hold it for a while and make sure that that pintle does not move. If it moves and you have a vacuum leak either in the hose or in the, or in the uh, diaphragm up here, so you can just obviously check your hose and make sure your hose is airtight first. To check your hose, you would just cover up the hose, right? And make sure the hose is airtight. So once you rule out the hose, then if you're getting a leak, it's going to be at the diaphragm and you'll have to replace the EGR valve. So once you got your EGR valve all cleaned up, or if you're putting in a new valve, take a look at your at the pipe on the bottom. Um, the pipe that's, uh, I'll show you how to remove it next, but you won't have to remove it if it's not real clogged up. But if you're real clogged up here and you don't clean that pipe, you could drop in a new EGR valve. And if it's so constricted in the pipe that you're not getting enough exhaust gas through, you could still end up with that P0401 flow insufficient code, even with a brand new AGR valve, because there won't be enough exhaust gas getting in here. So take a look at your pipe. Um, if you're just going to drop your new one back in and you want to skip that, uh, check the timestamps and skip ahead, because next uh, we're going to take that pipe out. This tube here for the EGR valve, this goes down and to right back here, you can see that, that nut right there. And zoom in. That nut there is a 24 millimeter, and then that threads into the head, and then there is a whole board in the head over to the exhaust side, right? Because the exhaust sides will run this side of the engine. Let's see if I can get this this tube out. So let's see. This screwdriver might be too long. I'm gonna try to get in here and pull this harness back. Yeah, I might be able to turn this when I get this out, but I have this little short flathead screwdriver in the little groove that allows this harness to slide back. And what I'm doing is I'm just sticking it. You just have to feel around. You're just gonna stick it in here and turn it like that. All right, so that gives a little room. I might be able to get a crescent wrench on that, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and remove this stay to give myself a little bit more room. Okay, this is a 14 right here. Let's see how tight this is. All pretty tight. 
going with a little bit more leverage here. Uh, a lot more leverage. Let's see. Okay, there's that. So this up here is the one that we just did, and that was a 14, and now we'll do this nut, and that is a 12. Let's see if I can get on it with this extension. Okay, yeah, I can get on it like that. Feels like that one's a little bit tight too. Oh yeah, not nearly as tight as the other one. All right, and down here, there are two more fasteners. You can see there is a bolt. And then down there is a nut. I'm gonna remove this PCV hose to get it out of the way, so you maybe see better on the camera. This just closes and you pull it, pull it right off. That just slides off there. Looks like that bottom one is a, the nut is a 12 millimeter. Yeah, it's a 12 millimeter. And when you're turning this, don't accidentally break your coil connection. It's not too tight. And you can see I just broke it free there. And then the one on top, which you can't see, but I can just get on here. Let's see if that's a 12 or a 14. To 12 as well. And you see where I am right there under that. So let's break that free. Okay, that one's not too tight either. This bottom little nut is going to be, might be a little bit difficult to put back on. I can get my hand on it like this, but I might have to take take the coil off to get it back on. All right, got those four fasteners out. Let's see if this will move. Okay, so there it goes. And so pull this back up and away just to give a little more space so I can pull this out a little bit more. I'm going to reach in here and pull these guys up, these, uh, these plug wires, and then I can really move this out of my way. If you want to pull it out of the engine bay completely, you just push these down and pull it back. Mine are really hard right now to move and I don't want to accidentally break these electrical for the coils. So I'm going to leave them connected. But I can I can work with this the way it is, like this. So if you have a 96, this is where your distributor would be. seal that I uh, usually have to replace at some point. Let's see, eh, it looks like it might be a very tiny oil leak. I'll take a closer look down there and see if it's leaking badly. It doesn't look like my little seal here is leaking. The reason this is here is because Toyota didn't change the, the head when they went to um, when they went to the distributorless ignition in 98. And so that's why you've got this RTV here and here, and you've got to put it in these other spots. Here's another spot where you can see you have a piece. So this is the intake cam, and this is the, the exhaust cam. So that would this would normally be going into the distributor over here on the intake cam. So clearly now I can get a tool on this. And I think I'll go in with my um, 15 sixteenths because that'll be close enough to 24. I don't have a 24 millimeter uh, spanner. Uh, you could use a, a crescent wrench on there too. So now there is the nut there. And I'm gonna go in with this big long 15 16 and see if I can just get on there. All right, there it is. I just grabbed it. Just grabbed it right there. So I'm gonna try to turn this. And I will be turning it this this way. So I'll we'll hold the other end of the pipe and see if it will break free. Okay, there it is. So not too tight, actually. I think I'll be able to get in there with just a crescent wrench. All right, there goes. Okay, so I just need to get about a quarter turn on it and then you'll be able to spin it by hand. 
All right, let's see what this looks like taking this pipe out. Pull this back. We'll grab the other end of the pipe here and looks like it will just wiggle free. There it goes. Okay, there's the pipe. Look at that. Pipe is really not that dirty. I can't see into that corner, but unless there's a bunch of deposits on the corner, it really isn't that dirty. I cleaned up the pipe. I just went in there with some carb cleaner and a pipe cleaner. And what I did is I just put it in a tray in this position and then filled it up so that it was filled up to both pretty much to the end on both sides and then just let it set for a while. What I would do is if you pull your GR off and this looks pretty good up here, then I probably wouldn't bother pulling this pipe out. But if it looks bad, then maybe pull it out and clean it. Go back in with this pipe now. It'll just be reverse of the steps to remove it. So we'll get back down under here and get it in, get it in there. I suppose if your pipe is super dirty, you might think about going in here with a pipe cleaner or something. But it might be a little bit difficult to reach, so let's get this back on here and turn this nut. Kind of get it sort of aligned where it needs to be, like uh, like that. I'm gonna use the EGR valve for alignment. So I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put the EGR valve just in loose, and then uh, put these fasteners in so I know I can get that tack down okay. It looks through the FSM and I do not see a torque value for that nut there for the pipe for the EGR valve. It looks like it's going into a steel insert on the head. I will just get it nice and snug. And I'll get this on here. That's pretty snug. I think that'll do it. And we'll get this manifold stay on. It's going to go over that stud. And then the other one is down, down there. Not this one, this one under here. Not, I'm not stuff 14. I'm gonna go in, that's this, this one here. And just put this on hand tight. And then go get the bottom ones in. Zoomed in on the bottom one, that stud there. That's where that nut might be a little bit, might be a little bit tricky to get back in place. I'm gonna see if I can do it without removing the without removing the coil. But if you have to, you can just pull this you can just pull this bracket out back out. And there's just a couple fasteners here that hold the coil onto the the bracket or manifold stay, whatever you want to call it. I think I might just be able to get in here like this with it in the deep socket. Let's see. There we go. Oh, it's tight. It's tight, but you can get it. Don't want to drop that though. There's the nut on there loosely, and then this is that bolt that goes up under here. Yeah, we'll be able to see it with the camera. I might go in there with the socket on that one as well. Okay. It goes in here. Kind of feel around for it. There it is. And lastly, the this little nut, 12 millimeter for this stud here. And then get all those on and tack those down. I don't have any torque values, but this one over here was by far the tightest. That 14 was, was pretty tight. I'll double check and see if I've got torque values. I wouldn't go too crazy on these because they're going into that head and that head's a little more. No, I couldn't find any torque values, so just don't go nuts. That's back together. If you unplug your coils, plug them back in. And then we'll put this PCV hose back on. It's obvious which way goes which because it only fits one way. We'll get this electrical right here. It just slides back on there, so you just can turn this. And line it up, and pop it in. There it is. Now I'm gonna just take these off, the ones I just put on by hand, and 
get my gaskets and put the CGR valve on for real. I'm not sure which way this new gasket goes. It looks like Toyota changed the material. This is a, a harder material. It's like a, uh, it's almost kind of like a carburetor paper, like a cardboard paper. You can see it will tear like that. And this new one's also paper, but it's a bit more flexible. I'm not sure if it goes this way or that way facing the intake. I think I'm going to put this flatter side towards the intake. Hopefully it won't make a difference. Let's put that on there. We can get this gasket on. And this gasket is metal. There's a little ridge on one side, and it goes with that ridge facing up. All right, so I'll drop the valve in. And maybe I can just slip it. Just slip it under. Let's see. Okay, looks like I can. Oops, I knocked the camera, but that works. Just slip it under and then get these screws through. Make sure I have it in place. Let them move the camera. Okay, so I got that I got that gasket in there, but I'm gonna have to kind of poke this through and See if I can't get that aligned a little better because I can't quite get the screw in. So I get these fasteners in, a little finagling. This takes a little bit of patience and dexterity. You just get those bottom ones on hand tight and then get these two nuts on here. Do these uh, 12 millimeter nuts. And torque on the nuts is 108 inch pounds, nine foot pounds. There it is. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get a torque wrench on these little guys, these bolts, the 10 millimeters. But if you can, torque is 87 inch pounds. And now we don't want to forget those two hoses. This one goes here. And then the other one is the larger diameter here. One here, and that goes on the the one that's on the other side here. Looking from the other side of the vehicle now, just to give a view, it's this hose here. And as you can see, it, it doesn't go all the way past that. There's that length and you just need to get up to that stopper. Everything's back on the throttle body. Now we can grab our new throttle body gasket and put this back on. I'm gonna get these coolant lines and the vacuum hose on first. And remember, Remember when we took a, when we took this apart? This is coolant, coolant, and that's vacuum. So let me get back in here. All right, with these hoses, in case you forgot to label yours, or maybe the labels fell off, this one here that I have labeled L. This is a hose that if you follow it down, it goes back here, and then it comes into a junction. Oops, it comes into a junction behind the the coil. So if you follow the, your hand down on this, you'll find the other side of that hose pretty quickly. It's a short hose. But this here, this hose that I don't have the label on, is much longer. And as you can see, it goes all the way down under here. You can see it here between the coils. And it heads back up that way. So the one that's shorter, so as you're looking at the throttle body like this, that one goes to this, this one here. Okay, goes in here. And then this one, the one that is longer and goes that way, that one goes in this one here. Okay, I'm going to put those in. Okay. All right, so I have those up all the way now. And now I'm going to go around the front and bring those clips in place. All right, you got a better look for you. All right, so this was the one that I have labeled L. I'm going to take that off. So this is the short hose, this is the longer hose, goes on the side where the, where the spring is. When you're doing these little clips, you want to try to get on both sides. See how there's two over there? Not just one, because you can kind of mess them up. You get it in there, and then bring it all the way back up. And there's probably going to be sort of an imprint in the hose from where it was before. You might as well put it back kind of where it was before. Okay, like that, right there. Yeah, there's kind of an imprint in the hose that you could follow for a little bit of a guide. All right, those are in. Now we'll get the vacuum hose. All right, now this is the vacuum hose here. And that goes to that middle one there. 
So you want to come in with it this side because this is how the throttle body is going to be going back in. So we'll get it positioned right. There it is in place there. And that one was a little bit difficult to to slip on. You just have to be careful when you're when you're trying to slip it on that you don't ram some part of the throttle body into the firewall or whatever. So just keep an eye on these little parts here and the plastic parts because you're gonna find yourself really having to push down on this to get that hose on. At least if yours is anything like mine. Now we can get the gasket on. I'll be using a new gasket. There's the part number Felpro 61083. And it only goes on one way, so that's the way it goes on. It doesn't fit if it's like this, for example. It doesn't line up, which is pretty cool. Now if you get this Felpro one, you notice that you want to rub around the inside and kind of clean it up a little bit because there's some little bits of it that were falling off. This is a very different material compared to the two other ones. This is like a graphite. So this is going to fit just like that. So I'm going to put it on the throttle body. I'm going to put it on the throttle body and then run through the fasteners. Otherwise I won't have a way of holding it in place. So I'm going to put in two fasteners. And they will hold the gasket in place. Alright, so there's the gasket and the fasteners. And so I'll just get it lined up here and get those guys started. And then I gotta get the third one in. And these are 12 millimeter. Torque on the throttle body is 168 inch pounds or 14 foot pounds and you want to just get them in evenly before you get it all down because it is a gasket and you don't want to have an air leak here obviously okay all right back up front now we can put these cables back in so if you have a kick down cable just kind of give it a little tug Slide it in there real well. It's got to go in all the way, just like that. And then throttle link, you can just turn this. All right, put that in there, turn it. There it is. Okay. All right. Back over here, we get these hoses. And now I had mine labeled uh, front and rear, but if you want to just refer back to the modulator, you can see there's a P here and there's an R there. The R hose goes to this one and the P hose goes to that one. Yeah, I guess I can push this back here. And... All right, this hose we'll get in a second. Now we'll go ahead and get our electrical. All right, our electrical is here. And the black one, the black one goes to the throttle position sensor. Snap it in. The gray one, white one, goes to the IAC. Snap that in. All right, make sure those are in nice and tight. Now, if you had your plugs out like I did because you were down there fiddling with the tube, I should have put them in before I put the bracket back on, but no big deal. It's just that this one's too short now to reach in for number four, so you have to disconnect it. So to do that, just follow it, follow number four, four. Follow all the way down to the ear to the coil. You can also see there's a number four on the coil itself. And then you're just gonna pull up on this. It's like a it's like a big um, aux jack is what the spark looks like when it's out. See that? So then you can get enough slack to put that one in the hole. I don't mind. I wish I didn't have to bring it off of this little thing. Okay, and then you can drop four in. You only have to do that for four. Make sure when you get it in, oops. Make sure when you get it in, you press it all the way down. You only have to do that for the number four spark plug because the other ones, they're long enough. And then once you have it in, you can just go like this and push it all the way down. And you'll just want to make sure it snaps. A little clap, clasp, snap, and pull, tug on it, it's good. And then slip it back in here, it's this little thing. Okay, you can see that the this one that's a four that's on there. The wires are the wires are numbered. If you have your original wires, you're probably not gonna 
be able to see the numbers. But it's no big deal if you left them in the if you left them in their little plastic things, because you can tell by how far they reach which goes where, right? So, but if you're confused, definitely stop and make sure that you have the right wire. And the wires um, are all different lengths. And it is, it is important to have them in the right ones because this is timing, right? So, put this one in here. Okay, push them all the way down. Now grab your big air hose and get this in place. This is just going to drop back down. Then we'll have a few hoses to hook up. But first you want to get it over here onto the throttle body and you do have to give it a little persuasion. Get it all the way back in. There it goes. All right. And over here. Before you put the clamps on for the air filter, whoops, make sure that you get this one, the one that goes here. And this is that zigzag shaped one that goes down to the charcoal canister, you can see down there. And that's the one that goes on here. Push that one out of the way. Over here, go ahead and get the, make sure you have your air filter in. Go ahead and get these clamps down on the air filter. There's these two here, and then the two on the other side. And then grab this vacuum hose here. This is the one that goes in this little, that goes in this little, little deal. And that comes up and slips right on there. I had to replace this one because it was getting a little brittle. You have to replace these vacuum hoses. They're metric sizes and so you won't have a perfect match but it'll be pretty, pretty close. If you just go to the AutoZone store with a little piece of it, and then they can give you a match. Then up here, there's these two down here, and this here slides right, slides right back in there between those two little things. The temperature sensor goes right in here into the air box. Just push it in. Uh, right here, PCB hose. Push that all the way in. Make sure that's all the way in there. And if you have ABS, this will slide back on here. So it snaps like that. Back over here on this side of the air hose, we need to fasten that. And that is a 10 millimeter. And you don't want to go crazy on it, but you want to make sure you have the hose pushed in all the way, all the way there. And then tack this down pretty well. So last check, since we had a lot of stuff going back over there, AVS relay back in place, IAT sensor plugged back in, all the clamps here, one, two, and three, four on the air box down, this little hose right there plugged into the back of the air box. The PCV hose pushed in here, or here, or both, if you took out both, this little uh, accelerator link cable, put that right back there, uh, up on the throttle body. Kick down cable in place if you have an automatic throttle cable in place. This hose from the R port on the vacuum modulator goes here. The hose on the P port on the vacuum modulator is this one and it goes there. EGR valve hose in and also that hose underneath uh, between the vacuum modulator and in the EGR valve if you had the EGR valve out. The two coolant hoses on the bottom of the throttle body and the one vacuum hose. Electrical for the IAC and electrical in the back for the TPS. This 10 millimeter on the clamp here for the uh, air hose and this hose here plugged in. You probably didn't undo this vacuum hose for, hose for the throttle valve, but it goes right back in there. And that ought to do it. Now, um, it's good practice to disconnect the battery. Just disconnect the negative on the battery and reconnect it. That'll reset because you're going to have to relearn idle, especially if you had really had a really clogged up EGR valve or if you had some um, codes going on. So resetting, that'll clear your codes, and then you'll relearn idle. You might get a little high idle when you start her up uh, from this cold state after having done some work. But after a normal driving cycle, she should get back to normal. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you for watching, and good luck with your repair.